All right, guys, I've had a lot of people ask me how the Breitling is doing. It's been, I think, just over a month. I've worn it a ton. It uh, Every time I end up getting this guy on wrist, it remains on wrist for quite a while. I actually even lent it to Bruce uh, reluctantly. I mean, I like to get him uh, some of the watches so he can see them and experience them and share them with everybody, too, because his level of uh, quality on his videos is far better than mine obviously but um, nevertheless uh, I gotta say I don't regret this purchase at all I'm still absolutely um, really liking this watch uh, actually I don't think I had really looked at it too much I had looked at Breitling before but um, on a separate chat I was having uh, Homer uh, my buddy Homer showed uh, a a wrist shot of this watch on his wrist when he stopped at an authorized dealer. Both this dark gray and then they have like a silver dial one. They both look amazing. I actually had a hard time choosing, but I knew uh, this one was just going to work better for me for whatever reason. I think because of that, I already have the uh, Oyster Perpetual um, in white, which is kind of a silvery type dial. So I didn't want to have the same color of dial to, uh, you know, to similar colored dials on two different watches. I don't know why, but um, I think this is a better contrast and I like both these uh, coexisting in my collection. So let's talk about the, the Breitling a little bit more because I really only did the unboxing and talked about the uh, purchase. So I did purchase it from Crown & Caliber. It is technically a used watch when I bought it, but 100% uh, uh, zero problems purchasing from them. Uh, the watch came better than I expected. Uh, I threw it, you know, that old video. I'll put a link in the description if you didn't watch it already. But I even did a time graph around it. The thing was like flat line. It was dead zero, no plus, no minus. And on wrist, I'm experiencing exactly that. It's just dead. whatever I said of that, it like stays there. So uh, there's no deviation. The bracelet um, is amazing as well. You can see I got a couple little scratches. But being that this is the brushed model... Instead of the full polished, um, I don't know that it'll necessarily hold up any better. You're still going to get those same scratches. That, they're just less visible, I guess. So the bracelet is uh, just amazing. Like you wouldn't think uh, these size links would flex like they do, but they're all individual uh, when it comes to their articulation. So extreme comfort. Um, I could see where some people would say that the stamped clasp part would be a letdown. Uh, when you're talking this level of watch, but the the milled part is beautiful and it has the traditional Breitling uh, polishing, which is just high level. Um, but the clasp, I really don't have an issue with either. Um, I mean, maybe it's just because I've been so used to the uh, Seiko clasp. They, they just don't bother me. I like the thinness of them. Uh, so, and it's usually on the bottom of my wrist, but um, I kind of like it being more of a base model as well, the Colt, because it is somewhat of an entry level. I'm sure you could find less expensive uh, used Colts or used Breitling, certainly. And I, I may explore that later on because I do really like the brand. Uh, the Crystal, I mean, you can tell here even in video um, because they put such a good quality anti-reflective coating both on the bottom and the top. The Crystal basically disappears. I mean, you have to really force some light on it before you even get some of the uh, aspects of the crystal. So another feature I like about it that I didn't really uh, notice at first is the hollowed out uh, seconds hand on the tip there. Just kind of fun, I like it. Um, the only thing I could say that maybe I wish it did have, I wish it had the traditional Breitling applied logo instead of the just the signature B. It would have been nice to have the full on uh, wing set there. But that's nitpicky, I really don't care. Um, I like the metal bezel. The brushing is beautiful. Um, I know another complaint that some people might have is the fitment of the end link to the case. It really just doesn't match up. It has not bothered me one bit. Not at all. Um, the bezel action is amazing. Um, there's no traction other than the rider tabs, um, but they're, they're easy to get. I mean, even if you're not looking, you're going to be able to it'll slip until you grab them and then... The bezel action is just superb, you know, and that's part of the, you know, the way they mount it. It's all screwed down, so you can adjust the tension and everything. I haven't messed with it or anything, but um, 
The loom is pretty good. It's not like Seiko loom or anything like that. Sign crown, and when the crown is unscrewed, the, uh, let me show you here. When you, even when you pop it all the way out, it is like, there's like no wobble. I mean, there's just a, a little bit of play there, but there's no like wobble or anything like that. For being a smaller, more delicate looking crown and stem system, it is very robust feeling. The watch is, uh, size-wise, is uh, super wearable too. Um, it is probably just under 41 millimeter. And then the lug-to-lug -lug is like a 49.9, but you have a nice thin turned down lugs. And then of course the bracelet folds over really easy. Uh, it's only like 11 millimeter thick. It is crazy thin. That um, modified ETA movement they put in there, which is just spectacular, um, wears really thin. Just such a great looking watch. I, I really can't get enough of it. Um, every time I put it away in the case, I look forward to strapping it back on. So um, lug width here is 20 mil. Bracelet tapers down to probably just a touch under 18 mil. So let me give you a wrist shot of it here, guys. I know I'm kind of rambling on. Uh, good thing Bruce pointed out to me too. You know, I was always trying to push on the clasp right here. When you're strapping these on, you just want to push like here and push upward on them. It clasps much easier. So thanks for that pro tip from Bruce. You know, if I would have been chatting with the Breitling guys, I probably would have learned that a long time ago, but I like to just figure things out myself, it seems like. So you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, I think it wears great. And that's all that really matters, right? That I like it, so, and I do. So if you guys are looking at one of these, um, great watch. Whether you go to the AD, the uh, brand new price on it is $3,620. I'm sure you can get some sort of discount. I know Breitling typically will offer some sort of discount. It's not like trying to track down a, a steel Rolex or anything like that. You know, these these should be in the cases. Um, I paid, I think I paid around $2,300 from Crown & Caliber. Um, also... I think a great deal because there's probably a ton of guys that buy these and then trade them in, never really wear them or whatever. And that might have been the case with this because it legitimately looked brand new. So I did not have a problem buying that at all. Um, let me close you out with a loom shot and we'll just call that a video. I think I covered just about everything. If the, if you guys have any questions, this, one, this one's going to be around a while. So if you have any questions, um, just, you know, holler at me and let me know and I can try to squeeze it in a Q&A video later or something. So you can see there's the loom, really nice and consistent, plenty bright enough. It is green, obviously, and uh, it's pretty long lasting. I mean, it's nothing crazy like Seiko or anything. You can even see the Seiko trying to power in the back, but it, but it's no slouch either. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's definitely a, a nice potent loom. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.